Well, it's finally happening. Vaccines are rolling out all around the world, especially here in the United States, where we are finally being exceptional in a good way. It's It's been a long time since that's happened, I think. But yeah, apparently we've already dished out more than 93 million vaccines as of this recording, which is incredible. That's about a third of all the vaccines that have been distributed throughout the world. As I mentioned in the past, I know that I'm going to be at the end of the line for this. Uh, I don't have any known comorbidities. I'm young-ish, uh, and I can work from home for the foreseeable future. So I'm happy to see other people get the vaccine first. That said, uh, I have signed up for two different efforts that might help me get a vaccine sooner, legally and fairly. Uh, and I wanted to tell you about those at the top. Uh, first, I got on a list that will send me an alert if a healthcare provider has a vaccine that's going to go bad and just be thrown in the trash if it's not used right now, uh, usually due to someone canceling an appointment. Uh, I still have to fill out my age and comorbidity information, so I assume that I'll still be at the end of that list, uh, but hey, if I'm the only person who is around at the time and a vaccine is going to be thrown away, then I will absolutely take it. I was skeptical about this at first because I was like, oh, this is just, they, they're just going to steal my information. But uh, I do know several people who have received their vaccines through this method. So I'll include a link down below uh, and in the transcript, as always, if you want to check that out. The other thing I signed up for is called My Turn, and it's a new initiative launched by California that lets you volunteer to help other people get vaccines. And after you put in a solid day or half a day of work, you can get your own vaccine too. It's such a cool idea, and you don't need to be a medical professional to volunteer because vaccine distributors still could use people who can help in a variety of ways, like greeting people when they show up for their appointments, for instance. Uh, when I signed up, unfortunately, there were no opportunities around me, but they say that as more vaccine distribution centers get up and running, uh, the more opportunities will show up. Uh, and how cool would it be to know that you helped people get vaccinated against this pandemic? I mean, it's pretty awesome. And I'm hoping that other states will follow California's lead. So again, link to that is, is below and in the transcript. Still, if neither of those efforts get me a vaccine sooner than expected, I'm still optimistic that I'm going to be vaccinated by the fall, which is what I've been hoping for. And with a little luck, maybe I will experience an almost normal summer. I, I'm so excited. Uh, because I've always assumed that I will be last on the vaccine list and I will literally take whatever they've got, one thing I have not put a lot of thought into until recently is which vaccine I want, because there are several out there that have been approved. I just always figured, hey, they're all good. They're all better than nothing. Just give it to me. But there are people out there who are concerned about the differences between these vaccines, as I learned recently when the mayor of Detroit announced that the city would reject 6,200 Johnson & Johnson vaccines because they'd rather give their citizens the good stuff, uh, the 95% efficacy vaccines instead of the 72% efficacy vaccine. Oh, shots fired. And I don't mean into people's arms, which is where shots should be fired during the pandemic. Sorry, that's that was a terrible joke. Um, I'm just going to move on. I saw a lot of people on social media get super angry about Detroit doing that. Like I said, all the vaccines are good, right? And we are in a pandemic, right? So take what you can get. And that was my first thought as well. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought... No, actually, that's not quite right. Because first of all, Detroit wasn't actually rejecting vaccines that they desperately needed. They already had enough of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines to cover their population. Uh, I know a lot of people think that this is a problem of supply and demand, but uh, while vaccine makers have had to hustle to produce enough vaccines for everyone, the biggest hurdle we face is getting those vaccines first to the medical professionals uh, and then handling the massive logistical headache that is organizing it so that millions of people 
can get access to the vaccine in an orderly fashion. Like some places are setting up all night clinics, things like that. Um, California petitioning people to volunteer. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. We aren't just mailing every household a batch of vaccines. You know, it's much more difficult than that. So yeah, Detroit was rejecting vaccines that they didn't really need anyway. But it's still not great optics when an entire city says, no, thank you. We do not want this one particular vaccine. Like, that's going to pique some people's curiosity. And some of those people were already hesitant to get the vaccine because they don't think it will work or they think Bill Gates is going to use it to track them as though Mark Zuckerberg doesn't already know exactly what is in their colon at any minute of any day, but whatever. And that's not good. We want people to know that the vaccine that they get is going to be safe and effective. But as Maggie Kurth pointed out over on Twitter, uh, we as science communicators can't counter that thought process by saying, hey, there's no difference between the vaccines, just shut up and get one. Because really, there are differences between the vaccines, and we don't know how big the differences are yet. The Moderna and Pfizer vaccines were found to be 95% effective during their clinical trials. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was found to be about 72% effective. So if we say they're all the same, then vaccine skeptics will look at those two numbers and say, obviously that is a lie. 92 is better than seven or 95 is better than 72. What we can say is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was tested under very different circumstances. By the time it was in trials, COVID-19 had already mutated several times. So we don't really know how the other vaccines would do in the same circumstance. It's possible that they're all about as effective as one another, but that's the kind of information that we will only know for sure after we have another month or so of vaccinations. So they may differ in efficacy, and they also may differ in other ways. Uh, The biggest one that we all know that they differ from is that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is a single shot as opposed to two, which that means that vaccine-hesitant people might be more interested in the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. One and done, easy. Um, Especially it, it would be good for people like me who are easily distracted and might just like forget to show up for the follow-up appointment. I mean, I 100% would show up for my second COVID vaccine shot, but if I didn't realize how important it is, then yeah, maybe not. Like one vaccine has a huge advantage over two. People are also reporting fewer adverse effects from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Besides rare, serious allergic reactions, there are no adverse effects that should dissuade anyone from getting any of these vaccines. But as we get more and more information, it appears that different vaccines do different things to different people. More than 15% of people reported side effects like fever, and muscle aches after their second shot of Moderna. And that compares to just 2% after their one shot of Johnson & Johnson. But here's the important way that all the vaccines do appear to be very similar. Data is still trickling in, but it seems as though all these vaccines prevent hospitalizations and deaths at a consistently high rate. Note that that's not the same as efficacy. It doesn't mean that one might not be better at making sure that you don't get sick at all, but it does mean that they're all doing a really good job of keeping people alive and out of our struggling hospitals. That's very big, very good news. Note quickly, some people are saying that all of the vaccines are 100% effective at keeping people out of hospitals and morgues. But that's not true. Um, Below uh, in the transcript, you'll find uh, a link to an Atlantic article that does a deeper dive on that. But honestly, the details aren't important for everyone to know. Don't get bogged down in it. The important thing to know is that they appear to all do a very good job of reducing deaths and hospitalizations. But exactly to what extent, we do not know yet. Finally, I want to end with something important that I sort of took for granted, but now realize that a lot of people 
haven't considered it, whatever your first vaccine is, it probably won't be your last. Once we get everyone through this first big round of vaccinations, we'll know a lot more about which vaccine works best, which has the least severe side effects, and importantly, how long immunity lasts with each one. All of that data will inform which vaccine you get next, if you have to take another vaccine, which you probably will, uh, or which booster you get next. And at that point, you will probably have a choice of some sort. I mean, this is America, so by have a choice, I mean your paycheck and your insurance provider will probably tell you which one you can get, but still. Uh, I say all of this because while it's easier to tell the general public, all the vaccines are the same, just get whatever, uh, it's not necessarily better to do that. We have a very tricky tightrope to walk between keeping things simple, really doesn't matter which vaccine you get, uh, but not lying to people. The vaccines are all different in at least small ways. Giving them hope, once we're all vaccinated, we can probably get back to normal, but not giving them a false sense of security. The vaccines aren't a cure-all, and even if you're vaccinated, you should still probably take some precautions to protect yourself and those around you. All that said, I, I'm feeling a great sense of optimism, and I hope that you are as well. The vaccines are working. We can see the impact that they're having already, and things are going to get better very soon. So hang in there, kittens.